we can... Uh. Ah! Welcome to Taskmaster. I'm Greg Davis and I've got some news for you. The end is nigh. The penultimate episode is upon us. And what a joy it's been to watch these pumped up athletes of Task perform. Their skill range is so broad that together they're like a giant human Swiss army knife. I'll leave you to decide which of them is the weird thing for getting stones out of horses' hooves that no one ever uses. But I'll give you a clue. It's John Kearns. <laughs> so, let's get on with it, shall we? Please welcome... Dara Bree! <laughs> Frank Reddy! John Kahn! Munya Chihuahua! And Sarah Millican! And sitting next to me, a man who recently confided in me that he thinks that the refuse team that collect his bins every week are stupid and don't deserve to be paid. <laughs> Like Prize task, then. What's the category of the day, please, Alex? I like the question and I hope you like the answer. It's the most underestimated item. Hmm. <laughs> and guess what? There are five points at stake for the most underestimated item. And at the end of the show, the winner will take home all five underestimated items. And there's a good chance they'll have gone up in people's estimation by then. <laughs> right, John. I brought in a, uh, a penny. <laughs> <laughs> That's what John's oh, brought yeah. in. <laughs> <laughs> Most underestimated item. Just a one pence piece, then. It's, yeah, lowest value thing we've ever had. Yeah. <laughs> so if you walk past the wheelbarrow, right? Yeah. And there was a thousand pound in twenty pound notes. Yeah. You, you're taking that home, I presume. I'm, oh, I'm wheeling that straight home. Yeah. <laughs> so am I. Yeah. If there's a wheelbarrow with a uh, thousand pounds worth of pennies in it. Yeah. I think you're just going nah. Oh no, I'd take that home. If I saw a thousand pounds worth of pennies, I'd go, yeah, no, that's worth wheeling home. Yeah, same amount of money, that's why. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, was, uh, I, was, I was banking on you saying you'd just leave it. <laughs> I mean, I honestly think, John, sometimes that you're in this round you're provoking me. <laughs> <laughs> Munya, hello? Yes. Can you lift our spirits after that? 100%. So, I bought in a Zimbabwean trip. Boomerang. Show him, Alex. Here it is. Okay. <laughs> so, whoa. <laughs> Any of you ever heard about the Norfolk Panther? Widely discredited. Go on. <laughs> I was out for a walk in the forest. I've got my trip boomerang in my pocket because, you know, Norfolk was like a war zone in those days. Right? Oh, yeah. So, oh, my God. I hear a little rustle in the bushes and I'm thinking, cool, that's a pheasant. But as I walk, the rustle starts to follow me. So, before I know it, now I'm running. OK, and I can hear literally trees moving, bushes rustling, this, that, and the other, and I'm being chased by the panther, like, I know those footsteps. So, without thinking, I grab the boomerang, swing it, I throw it and carry it on running. And the reason I know it hit the panther is because if it didn't, I would be dead. <laughs> is there a chance that you kill someone's dog? <laughs> Wow, I mean, that is absolutely rubbish. OK, OK. Yeah. Um, Fern, <laughs> this is looking pretty optimistic, I think. Uh, I brought in a, a bottle opener key ring. OK. You're at a party, you don't have any social skills, you don't have very many friends. People don't want hey, to hey, talk hey. to you. Who is this character? It's me in my everyday life. Fine. <laughs> and then someone says, has anyone got a bottle opener? And you say, yes, me. And then people want you, they keep you in their life. I think I've had my bottle opener key ring for maybe seven years now, and it's been incredible. So basically, this is what Fern has brought in. It says something, doesn't it? How do you two feel about the fact that I'm genuinely considering putting this above yours? No. <laughs> No, that can't be. Sarah. I've been in my current relationship for 16 years. Yep. And we decided to start this. Here it is. OK. <laughs> which is uh, the joy of sex. We just thought we'd work our way through it, start to finish. But the problem, as you can see, there's a bookmark 
We only got eight pages in <laughs> and we gave up. We massively <laughs> underestimated how long it would take and how much effort it would take, <laughs> given that we're both in our mid to late 40s. We got up to the page where it suggested you eat food off each other. We overdid it. We had to have a nap. Didn't work. <laughs> you ever used food during sex? Oh, yeah. Yeah? What yeah. have you done? Everything. What haven't I done? Chips? Done. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. You have underestimated your own sexual appetite. <laughs> Absolutely. Dara, what have you brought in? Something humble, which is, in fact, great, uh, which is the humble fish finger sandwich. We have one here. It is a comfort food, it is light, uh, it is incredibly easy to prepare. Yeah. It is the friend of all hungover dads who have to prepare a meal for children. Kids love it, it works, it's done fast and straightforward, and I think, because we live in a world of burgers and chains, the fish finger sandwich is the next food trend. Can I say something, Dara, and I hope you'll take this in the spirit it's intended. I will. You throw so much information out sometimes, I sometimes feel I'm at a chicken auction. <laughs> 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 I tune out and all I can hear is, it'll give me five, give me eight, seven, seven, seven. It's incredible. <laughs> I do. I'm sorry. Right, I should score these. I'm giving Monia one point. Oh. Yeah. Monia one. I mean, unbelievably, John... I can't believe it. What do you mean you can't believe For it? a penny! Two points to John's penny, OK. You shouldn't underestimate a fish finger sandwich. I have to take Sarah's word for the fact she underestimated the joy of sex. And Fern's um, beautiful story about the power of the bottle opener means I very much have underestimated the bottle right. opener. OK, then. So, what I'm going to do is give them all three points. Three points? Yes, and no that's an end to points. it. Right, right. Three points, three points, three points, two, one. There are no winners! There! Yeah. Task time! OK, yes, it is. And this one started off as a tie-break task, but then we decided it was something that everybody should see. So, here we go. <laughs> Hello. Hello, oh, you're so smiley today. I like that little voice. <sighs> oh. <laughs> have a little look. Oh, that's interesting. We'll have you first. Feeling good? Oh, I'm feeling great. Still got a new one. Exciting, isn't it? Hello, Sarah. <laughs> 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 It's almost like you're on to me. <laughs> Yuck! Snort. Then blow a raspberry. Then whistle. Then repeat that sequence for one minute. Snort, raspberry, whistle. <laughs> the most completed sequences when... <laughs> Your time starts when you next snort. <sighs> I don't even know how to snort. So what is a snort, in or out? <laughs> Can you do a snort? <laughs> <laughs> I can't whistle, but, you know. You can practice whistling before snorting. Oh, you'd love that. <laughs> it's a bog-standard game of international snort raspberry whistle. <laughs> <laughs> my understanding of the test. I suppose it is. It would appear... Few members of the cast have reached adulthood without learning how to snort or whistle. And to demonstrate this, we begin with Fern Brady. Deep breath. <laughs> Here we go. <sighs> Is that your first snort? <laughs> I've got to start the watch. Have you... Oh, you started, have we?
Thank you, Fred. I can all say, I mean, it was basically a fairly intimate film uh, of a breakdown. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get any completed sequence? No. 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 <laughs> I really had high hopes for you winning an episode before the end I of this I thought I won that one. <laughs> How? <laughs> How do you think you won that one? Because I kept trying. Okay. Well, let's see two of them together now. John Kearns can't whistle, but Sarah Millie can. Here we go. <laughs> Dizzy, but in quite a sort of good way. You were very focused. Can I do a horn just to centre myself? <laughs> Is that all right? I'll have one more then. Oh, actually, the hand on me. <laughs> I mean, frankly, compared to the last effort we saw, you look like a professional. Thanks. She thought that time had stood still for a moment. It's called a Kairos moment. People experience it with grief or this. <laughs> Yeah, it's very common. <laughs> she completed 18 cycles in a minute. That's pretty good. Ooh. John, the whistling absolutely destroyed your game. Now, we know you've been working on your whistling. <laughs> Can we see an in-studio whistle? It's glasses off normally, John. <laughs> Competition conditions, John. <laughs> yep. <laughs> There are still two potential snort raspberry whistle triathletes left to go, so here's how Dara and Munya got on. Thing is, this will make me look unattractive. So can I shield myself? There's different aspects of my career, and model could still be one. And I'm gonna pick a you know, snorting raspberry five foot three Zimbabwean, are they? Sounds like walking past your bedroom every night. <laughs> no. Oh, no. I'm too dry to snort. <laughs> it's getting dry now. Ten seconds. Could have just taken your whistle off you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's irritating. The little mucus I had, I worked it. <laughs> now we're getting to the business end of this competition. <laughs> I mean, that's the first question I want to ask, really, is why, Munya, you opted for a pervert's whistle? <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was easier to do. <laughs> Every time you did it, I sort of covered myself up a bit. <laughs> Um, Dara, yes. this is what I uh, wrote down. Dara looks like he's going to turn his head inside out. <laughs> Connor, but the speed of the fucker! Exclamation <laughs> mark. 
I get into quite a quite a role with it all, to be honest. Give me some statistics. Well, Dara was faultless with rhythm, completed 17 cycles, Munya 24. So it's more, oh, than, more than one item every single second. What are the scores? Are you happy to reward John and Fern for taking part? Yes, I think they should be rewarded for taking part. In which case, they get two points each for coming joint fourth, three for Dara, four for Sarah, but Munya Chihuahua gets five points. Well done, wow. Munya. Lovely. Let's have a scoreboard then. OK. Fern, yet to win an episode, the only one so far. She's in second last on five. Sarah is in the lead with seven points. Oh. It's close. It's close. I'm looking at the task, please, Alex. OK. And play. Open it, shouldn't I? <clears throat> what? Oh my god! Write a one minute, one person play. Best script wins. You have 20 minutes. Your time starts now. Okay. Cold pen. Also, this is thick paper. That's a lot of GSMs, isn't it? <laughs> Plays are boring. Have you written plays before? Yeah. I found one the other day that I wrote on the Tesco checkouts in Bathgate. It was quite misogynist and uh, ageist. But you wrote it? I wrote it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> OK, yeah. Interior day. <laughs> yeah. The audience walk in. Right then. <laughs> Ten more paper. Seven minutes left, John. How many words have you written? That's not important. <laughs> 20 seconds, Donna. <laughs> Door, in brackets, by John Kent. I mean, knowing the, the team as I do, I can't imagine what these plays are going to be like. Mm -hmm. I'm buzzing. Well, we did get five lovely plays written by five lovely people. But what to do with them? Well, this is what we did with them. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Fern. A script by John Kearns. <laughs> Meaning by Fern Brady. I don't know what this is going to say. Oh, my God. Yeah, 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 yeah. Stage and perform this one-minute, one-person play. Best performance wins. You've 30 minutes. Your time starts now. OK. I'm going to read the play first. <sighs> Sarah's is going to be good, isn't it? Mine was, do you know what? Mine's piss easy. There's no lines. <laughs> Man, OK. This is very good. Is there no dialogue? Oh, you dick. <laughs> Why would a woman in a play? Oh, I remember my woman. My woman in a play was really good. It was really action-packed. There's lots of stuff happening in my woman in a play. My woman in a play was much better than this. <sighs> I'm just going to go for it and just let the emotion take over me. So, let's make me a woman. Is sat on stage cross legged. <laughs> wow, until he's young. It's not been long since he's done assemblies, that's what I'm assuming. <laughs> There's a lot of creative differences over here, I, uh, <laughs> I, I sense. Sarah was furious. There's yeah, no but... two ways about it. She was angry. Jesus. I wanted to create a, an otherworldly experience. Because I once read that if you salitate two ping pong balls over your eyes and then play white noise, you will hallucinate. Yeah. So I wanted to create that for my actor. Yeah. <laughs> John's lost it. He knows what's coming. <laughs> I think I know which play we're all looking forward to. Too. <laughs> and they're getting scored uh, separately here on their playwriting ability and their performance. Yes, they are. A lot so, of points at stake. So oh. first, to tread the boards and performing Fern Brady's play, Meaning, 
It's Manya Chihuahua. Oh, God. <laughs> hey, let go of that. My head. <laughs> My head. <sighs> I'm reading this, you book. You're talking. Now you can hear me. Things are gonna change around here. No more making me dance for Instagram likes. No more pictures or Halloween costumes. No more forced cuddles. I'm done being your affection slave. I'm my own person. But. <laughs> The sponges? Why do you hunt the kitchen sponges? Because of you! I should be out there in the wild killing! Instead, I'm in here hunting inanimate objects. We all seek meaning in our lives, no matter how trivial it looks on the outside. I'm just doing what I can to get by. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I love the I love the existential angst of the cat. She had a head injury, so you don't know if she ever did hear the cat or if it was all just in her coma. <laughs> oh, of course. Why didn't I pick up on that duality of meaning? <laughs> Munya, tell me about your character. You see that cat, yeah? Yeah. It looked a lot like the Norfolk Panther. <laughs> So the emotion just overtook me, fear, the danger, the panic, and, yeah, I think I would have died in that situation. Fern, what is the play about? I uh, just I love thinking about if my cat could talk. <laughs> That's your understanding of it, right? Yeah, and that came through. <laughs> <laughs> it came through loud and proud. Let's see another play. OK, well, it's another cat play. This time it's Fern oh, Brady's yeah. performance of Sarah Millican's play. Mm. I'm sitting in a cafe and it's cold. All around me are cats, but it's not a cat cafe. They can't call it a cat cafe since the law changed and they need the cat's consent. My cat died last year, but I don't miss it because it was an arsehole. It wasn't my cat, it was my nana's. But when she went into the home, she made me take him even though he was always a dick to me. <laughs> I'm the only one left who visits her now, and she mostly remembers me. She criticises my clothes and says I look tired. How way, man? <laughs> I'll tell her about the cats here. She always likes to hear about them. Mavis on the chair, Charlie in the window. She brightens at all the names like she knows them too. I check my phone. Seven missed calls from the home. Oh, shit. <laughs> I don't think I've got anything bad to say. I was absolutely enchanted by performance and narrative. It put me in mind of Alan Bennett. It was like an Alan Bennett play. Yeah, it was. I, I was really nervous because I hadn't met Sarah till we got here. <laughs> so it was really horrible knowing that my bad impression of her was coming out. <laughs> I liked it. I really liked your impression. It was just oh. for, especially the highway, man. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, it's Munya's play, The Power of Silence. And much to her annoyance, the actor performing it <laughs> is Sarah Millican. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Munya. <laughs> it is rubbish. You've got 
ask them, though, because you might have experienced something. Did you see something? Um, well, firstly, no, because my glasses were on the outside of my ping-pong balls. <laughs> I didn't see anything at all. Um, I thought, to be honest, it was the sort of thing I'd avoid at the Edinburgh Fringe. Um, <laughs> But I decide, we decided to commit and to do it as best we could. So I hope you're pleased with what happened. Are you happy with how it went? Yeah. I yeah, think, good. yeah. Sensational. <laughs> <laughs> Who's next? OK, well, strap yourself in for John Kearns. Oh, God. <laughs> T-minus 60 seconds. Hello, Houston! Jake here, or... Should I say hello, honey? <laughs> I guess we're doing this. Me going to Mars. You leading the ground team. What a couple we make, you and me. T minus 45 seconds. All right, all right. I know you're just doing your job. I get it. That's why you're the big boss and I'm just a fly guy. <laughs> Strapped in for the ride. Bit like our marriage, huh? <laughs> No, I know, I shouldn't bring it up, but you know, we, we got through a lot! T-minus 30 seconds. I just think we should be proud of what we overcame! Not every couple <laughs> can get over the things that I did! Okay, final checks. Engine. Go. Thrusters. Ah. Navigation system. Uh, honey, the navigation system don't seem to be connected. T minus 10 seconds. Well, honey, how am I supposed to land on Mars if I ain't got no navigation? T minus 5 seconds. Oh. oh, my God. You destroyed the navigation system! <laughs> I said I was sorry! I said I was sorry! That is an epic story. <laughs> As the author yeah. of the piece, I, I mean, I thought you did a wonderful job. I did an absolutely fantastic job of getting it across. I wouldn't have gone as Southern. <laughs> 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 I have to be honest. Yeah. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. <laughs> it genuinely made me feel very bad about what I've written. <laughs> Finally, then, it's the old Thesp himself, Dara O'Brien, performing John Kearns's piece. Here we go. <laughs> oh. He's here. Back to differ. Beckett said, words are a, a, a stain on, on silences and nothingness. Yep. When <laughs> <laughs> you've got a tattoo of that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was exceptional. You reminded me of uh, Brando in Apocalypse Now. <laughs> All joking aside, Dara, I genuinely found myself drawn in by your performance. <laughs> Initially, when I opened it, I said, oh, shit, there's nothing here. 
uh, that was my initial reaction to reading the script. And then I realised the point is to inhabit the character this, and, and, and create your own character within the eight words of dialogue. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're going to have to double score this. Uh, I'll do performance first. Right. I'm going to give Monia two points. Well done, Monia, two okay. points. Right. This is my most controversial thing because I think you were hampered by your play. It wasn't a play. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to give you three points because I think you cocked your head brilliantly and you walked out of the room in an excellent way. <laughs> and Monia, well, to use an old showbiz term, he's fucked you over big time. <laughs> Fern's performance was amazing. Thank you. And Dara's was amazing. What about John? But it was overall good. I'll give you four points. Mm -hmm. These two, they were genuinely strong acting performances. I'm giving them five points OK, each. five to Dara, five to Fern. <laughs> now, Monia's play. It was pretentious nonsense. I'm giving it one point. One point to Monia, yes. Up course. we go. <laughs> I felt the space epic was slightly overwritten. I'll give it four points. I'm going to give all of the others five points. I couldn't separate. OK, them. Fern, John and Sarah get five points for the play. <laughs> do you have a much shorter task where I have to do less work? I sure <laughs> do, Greg. Let art. Oh, hello, Fern. Oh, this is good, cos I haven't brushed my teeth today. <laughs> this looks random. No. Oh, is it not random? Is it not random? The sausage and the plank and the toilet paper? It's random, Alex. <laughs> Just drop it low. <laughs> what do we got? Choose one item from each plinth, definitely not a word, and bring them into the lab. You have one minute. Your time starts now. Right, there's a sausage. Yeah, I know a undercooked sausage when I see one. It's a vegetarian sausage. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do a toilet roll. I never go anywhere without a toilet roll. And then... brush. <sighs> Definitely not touching that. I am going to use a electric toothbrush and I am going to use a bin then. Brilliant. What is this? This is just a sheet, isn't it? Not just a sheet, it's a... Is it a valet fitted sheet? No, it's a queen-size sheet. <laughs> right, let's go to the lab. Wrong way. Wrong way! <laughs> Paint with a big brush, and if I show myself, I'm fine. Paint a self-portrait using your brush... ..or sausage... ..on your other chosen object. Massive fitted sheet. You must use the business end of your brush or sausage... What's the business end of a sausage? <laughs> the left. And in your self-portrait, you must be wheeled in your brush or sausage. You're obsessed with sausages, bro. Best self-portrait wins. You have 15 minutes. Your time started when you entered the lab. Hi! <laughs> oh. This is dead good. So I'm using it like a paintbrush. There was no rule as to say I had to use the whole business end. This isn't going to work well, is it? <sighs> it's a nice little swells. Here's first. Wait, just wait. The end will blow your bloody mind. OK. <laughs> the delicate lines of the face and neck may be more difficult to do. Yeah, I've never seen someone just do the eyes and then the body. I can't see. Why oh, can't you see? Because the brush is in the... Ooh. There's something I don't think would be an issue is when the sausage gets contaminated. If you want me to get you a cloth to clean your sausage, just that. I can have a cloth to clean my sausage. <laughs> yeah, I'd love that. What am I colour my eyes? Brown. We do not have brown. Look at this. Doesn't look good at all. Uh, balayage. That's balayage, isn't it? Red. Oh, my God. Oh, like a khaki colour. I could get a job for the army, doing their outfits. I bet none of those other plebs fought to mix cars. Daryl doesn't seem artistic. Oh, I like the texture. Oh, no, no, I've, I've ruined that now. You've got six minutes and 25 seconds on you. Roger that, A-Dog. 
Oh. What if the business end has fallen off? Is it a new business end, or do you have to use the original business end? Not been in this situation before, to be honest. Yeah. What if you want to show us on the inside? Let's venture inside my anatomy. Modern art. Yeah, I'm, I'd say I'm done now. Do you know what? You can give me another hour, I wouldn't make any other artistic decisions there. I think that is me. Bye, thanks. Bye bye. I'm gonna have a bath now. Tara, well, talk us through the um, eyes first system. I thought I'd get the blue right. I wanted the blue of the eyes to, because everything gets really muddy when you're painting with a toilet brush. It just gets really messy. So I thought I wanted, I wanted the, the, the blue of the eyes to be very striking. I thought I'd do that pure. Yeah. Lovely. So in your piece, we're going to be drawn in by the eyes initially. I think they're, I think they're the thing that's most <laughs> going to strike you about my piece. This is Dara's self portrait with the standard materials toilet brush on bed sheet. <laughs> Swim in those eyes. Those eyes are haunting. haunting. <laughs> haunting. <laughs> I so you did have to be wielding the item that you were using in the picture, and he is doing that. We can see this next to himself. <laughs> <laughs> you not only did yourself, you also did the mountains of Ireland in the background. I did. I oh, did. is that what they are? That's what they are. I'm actually obscuring many of the other mountains of Ireland. They're, right, they're just behind my head. <laughs> Does it remind you of Chris Whitty or not? Well, it's not a bad opener, that's what I'd say. <laughs> OK, well, compare it to this, then. This is Fern doing a self-portrait using a sausage on a toilet seat. Whoa! Jesus Christ. With a sausage. <laughs> this is a, a weird episode, isn't it? There are, there, there are things that are actually properly good in it. <laughs> <laughs> this is a first in Taskmaster history. Well, the only thing I've been good at out of any of the tasks was any artistic ones. Fern is brilliant. <laughs> yeah. It's a brilliant painting with a sausage. Yeah. Do you want to see it with her actual face? Oh, yeah, of course, yeah. Just as a comparison. She looks more realistic on the left. <laughs> <laughs> if you squint at Fern's picture, there's a tiny face trapped in the nose. <laughs> <laughs> it's meant to be that way. <laughs> you're, you're right. And I'll judge the painting on that face. <laughs> Now here's Sarah's self-portrait, done in the classic style, painted on a toilet roll with a broom. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I genuinely remember this is going well. <laughs> <laughs> this is it next to Sarah's face. I mean, it's got glasses on <laughs> and some red lips. I had a massive brush and toilet roll. I think it's all right. <laughs> Shall we take a look at John's? Sausage on loo roll picture. Here it is. Oh, pretty good. What does the green represent? Those are the Irish mountains. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to compare this to his actual face? Go on. <laughs> it's good. It's good. It's good yeah. The guy on the left does look like he's wearing those joke um, glasses and nose combination. <laughs> <laughs> It's a, it's a bit Mr Potato Head, isn't it? But I think the rosy cheeks represent how John's always laughing. But the eyes represent how deep down <laughs> the great crushing sadness. <laughs> <laughs> I really think it's excellent. Okay. Thank you. Who is next? Last one to see is, of course, Munya wielding a toothbrush on a wheelie bin. <laughs> oh, wow. Why do you have long boobs? <laughs> I wanted to paint with a sausage, but I have a bit of a sausage phobia because when I was at uni, I was so scared of going into my overdraft, I used to buy 30 sausages for 15p. <laughs> and as you can imagine, there weren't any sausage in them. Why did you buy 50 sausages for 15p? Calm down, calm down, <laughs> calm down, calm down, calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Can we finish it? Okay. <laughs> Do you want to see Munya next to Munya? It's just weird, it's just weird, Munya. There we go. Oh, identical. <laughs> Identical. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get these done quickly. All right, well, look, here are all five. Oh. Forgive me, Sarah. <laughs> as much as I enjoy your haunted face co coming through a brown roller brush, one point to Sarah Millican. Right. Now, this is interesting. <laughs> <laughs> look at Dara. <laughs> 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 it's Dara, isn't it? 
Well, I think so. <laughs> There's never been less expression in any thing. <laughs> <laughs> Two points to Dara. And whatever that old bloated bin body. <laughs> Three points. Three points to Manya, OK. Yes. I'm giving John Kearns four points. Four points to John. And the undeniably excellent sausage work of Fern Brady, five points. Congratulations, Fern. <laughs> right, Quick look at the scores. I can tell you she's not won an episode yet, but Fern is in the lead with 20 points. <gasps> OK, everyone, please make your way to the stage for the final task of the show! <laughs> Who's going to lead the final task out today? Manya Chihuahua. Tie your towel as tightly as possible around your body. You have 30 seconds. Pretty straightforward. You have 30 seconds. Everyone ready? <laughs> And they're off, Greg. Yeah. Different methods, as always. We've got neck, we've got ankles, we've got waists. There's a second part, ah. that's right. Would have thought so. <laughs> <laughs> off you go, Manya. OK. Place your hands on your head. Oh, no, you have to as well. OK, all right. Place your hands on your heads and keep them there until the end of the task. Get your towel completely in your bucket. <laughs> Fastest wins. Start on the whistle, please. Um... <laughs> Terrible decision I made. Good luck. <laughs> Glad I worked. It must be off your body. It must be off your body. Off your body and beneath the <laughs> John. <laughs> yes, there is progress. There is progress. Oh, oh, oh. I'm so tired. Completely in. Completely in. Completely. Oh. It's in. It's in. Oh. Oh. I'll tell you now, Sarah's going to be there for the rest of her life. I did the first part of the task really well. <laughs> Time's up. Let's set uh, all that up and have it to your final scores. Come and join me. Well, well, well. Some of them tied it too tight in the end. Yes. Mm. But that means they did the first part of the task very well. Very well. Too well for John and Sarah, who came in joint fourth. Fern valiantly in third place. Munya in second place. But Dara Bring gets the five points. He won the task. Well done, Dara. <laughs> mm. Which means Dara on 22, Fern also on 22, and one is 23. She's won the episode. <laughs> we learnt today? We've learnt that if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. And to prove that point, I'd like to end the show with another success story. I've been working with him in the break. And now, to finish the show, it's over to John. the final next. How did that happen? But for now, please applaud tonight's winner. One more time, it's Fern Brady!
for more Taskmaster, subscribe now.